Welcome to another edition of Tales of the Workshop. Today, we've got a demonstration where we're going to talk about locked rotor current. So stay tuned. When we're talking about induction motors, three phase here on my left and single phase here on my right, they both operate on the principle of induction. That means is that inside of the stator, when we apply voltage, it induces voltage and current into the rotor. What happens, that current actually creates a magnetic field inside of the rotor that is attracted to the rotating magnetic field in the stator. Now, under normal circumstances, a motor with the rotor turning actually helps regulate current flow. We call this counter EMF. Now, in the event that if we were to stop the shaft from turning, the motor is going to be subjected to what we call locked rotor current. That locked rotor current could be as high as five to six times the rated value of the current of the motor. According to popular electrical textbooks, this is bad. What happens is the motors depend on counter EMF to help regulate current flow. If I stop the rotor from turning, whether I'm putting too much load on the motor or in the case of my demonstration today, I am physically going to stop the rotor from turning and we're going to observe what is going to be the result. I'm going to be using a clamp on amp meter so we can record the amount of current the motor is going to draw through the various stages of this demonstration. Now what I'm going to do, I've exposed the wiring of the motor so I can actually put on the jaw of my clamp on amp meter so we can, we can record the current. Now right now it's got a pulley on the shaft and if we go ahead and set up the amp meter. Let's plug this in and I want to get a base reading of how much current this single phase induction motor is going to draw. Here we go. And we're drawing about a little bit more than 5 amps. 5.84, almost 6.2 depending on the load. Now, What we're going to do is we're going to wait for the motor to come to a stop. I'm going to use this Allen key and we're going to pull the pulley right off the shaft. Now I've made this device to help us immobilize the shaft. Now what we're going to do is bridge it and I'm going to get a screwdriver. We're going to fasten down the shaft and we're going to prevent the shaft from turning. I'm going to plug in the motor and what we're going to do is record the current as well as I'm going to use a stopwatch to see how long could the motor survive or maintain a locked rotor condition before it destroys itself. I'll be right back. I still got some preliminary work to do. We're back. Now I've gone ahead and adjusted the set screw here. I've set up a camera specifically so I can record the current flow in the, in the motor. I only get one opportunity to film this. Unfortunately, uh, due to our project production bu uh, budget, I don't have an unlimited supply of motors. So we want to make sure we get this in one take. So what we're going to do at this point is I'm going to plug in the motor. What is going to happen is this is going to immobilize the shaft, the induced voltage and current into the rotor bars here is actually going to start to create a lot of heat. And because the motor cannot create any counter EMF, we're going to see that over a period of a few seconds, the motor is going to get extremely hot. And what's going to happen is that the windings, just like on this motor, are going to burn out. So let's plug it in and get started. I'm going to start my camera over here and we're going to plug things in and watch. So you can see I'm pulling 
28, 29 amps. And there's some of the smoke that just came out of it. The motor lasted a total of about 17 seconds. Now, one of the things I should check, oh yeah, there was still power. Uh, we saw a large spark. Now, oh yeah, that's burnt. Now, let's try it again and just to see And you can see there's smoke coming up from the motor. Now there's probably an internal uh, thermosphere here that's cutting things off to prevent us from damaging it. But what we are trying or attempting to demonstrate here is that by immobilizing the shaft, we're seeing vast amounts of current being induced into the rotor. What we saw here is that according to textbooks, locked rotor current is going to be about five times higher than your full load current. My intention today was to demonstrate what locked rotor current could do. The outcome I was hoping to see was that this motor would be finished. Unfortunately, I was using a high quality motor where the manufacturers have included what we call thermal protection. They have a temperature sensitive switch built into the motor that is monitoring current. When the heat inside of the motor gets excessive, it actually opens up a switch, disconnecting power, preventing the motor from being destroyed. Uh, despite my best efforts in this application, what I set out to do today was trying to demonstrate the impact of locked rotor current. And I think I've accomplished that. What we know is if I immobilize the shaft of a motor that is depending on induction in order to operate, you're going to see tremendous amounts of current flowing into the machine. This is going to be bad because when you have excessive current flow, you've got a huge amount of temperature. And when we look at the body of a motor, manufacturers have a very slight, uh, a, a thin coating of varnish that covers these conductors. When that varnish starts get, becoming uh, exposed to heat, it actually bakes. It starts to crystallize, and that's where we start seeing short circuiting. We don't. We no longer have a resistance in the motor. You've got excessive current. The windings basically get cooked. Now, the wire itself isn't damaged, but it's the insulation, and it's the insulation that allows this motor to function properly. Well, that's what we've got for you for today. Thank you for participating. And if you're enjoying these videos, please consider hitting like and subscribe. Until next time, stay safe.